Welcome in to Math Party, people. Anderson here, your math coach. And what we're going to do now, we're following up from that previous video and previous set where we were talking about systems of equations with substitution. So we're still going to be doing substitution here, but if you notice, notice that the y isn't already by itself. Notice that the x isn't by itself. You notice that it's not looking like a substitution problem, right? So what I'm going to show you in this video is how to take a look at something like this when it comes to systems and still be able to work it with substitution. Now remember, there are two main ways to solve systems, elimination and substitution. And so we want to be able to master both concepts because whenever we're looking at those systems of equations word problems, you'll be able to solve it no matter which way you set it up. And that's the point. So let's go ahead and solve this one here. Let me show you how to get it done. We have negative 4x plus 10y equals negative 24. And then we also have negative 3x plus y equals 8. So again, the point here is to use substitution. So let's go ahead and understand how to do that. When it comes to substitution, the main idea is that we have one of those variables by itself, right? We have one of those variables by itself because then we'll be able to substitute it into the other equation. So let's go ahead and just take a brief little look at this equation right over here. That's the one I want to pay attention to, the negative 3x plus y equals 8. Because if you take a look at that, notice how it's possible for us to get that y by itself. It's possible. Let me go ahead and show you how. Let me go ahead and rewrite it here as negative 3x plus y equals 8. And if we just take a look over here and observe, my party people, here's what we can do. We can go ahead and actually move that negative 3x. We can move it over to the right side. Remember, the way that you manipulate equations is by doing the same thing to both sides. As long as you follow that rule, you're good. So watch this. I'll go ahead and add 3x to both sides. And if I do that, we're going to eliminate it on the left side, and it's going to leave us with, right over here, y equals 3x plus 8. That's exactly what we want, my party people, because now we can use that and substitute y into the other equation. Because remember, when it comes to systems, both equations are represented by the same variables. So the y in this equation over here is the same as this y over here. So we're allowed to substitute. So watch what's going to happen now. I'm going to rewrite this first equation here. I'm going to rewrite this one right down here. Let me zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to read out, rewrite it right over here. Negative 4x plus 10y equals negative 24. But what did we just get done doing? What we just got done doing is realizing that y, this y right over here, is equal to 3x plus 8. So what I can do is I can substitute the y equals 3x plus 8 into the other equation. And this is how it's going to get done. We'll have negative 4x plus 10 times y. And what y is, is 3x plus 8. And now that we have that, my party people, we're good to go. We're good to go because now what we have to do is distribute, solve, we have x, and if it's necessary, then go ahead and find y. So let's distribute here and get this done. The 10 is going to distribute to the 3x, and the 10 is also going to distribute to the positive 8. So let's get that done. Negative 4x plus 10 times 3x, that's going to end up being 30x. And then from there, we have the 10 times the 8, and that's going to give us 80. And that's going to equal negative 24. And look at this. Let's combine some like terms and move forward here. Because we have these two terms right here as like terms. So negative 4x plus 30x, that's going to be 26x plus 80 equals negative 24. And then from here, my party people, we'll go ahead and subtract the 80 from both sides. So right over here, subtract 80, subtract 80. Draw that line right over there. We eliminate what we need to. And then we have 26x equals negative 104, right over there. And so the last step that we'll need to take my party people is going to go ahead and be dividing both sides by that 26. So with that, booyah, right over here, divide by 26, divide by 26, cancels out on the left side, giving us x equals negative 4. Hey, hey, before we get to crushing this problem, just wanted to remind you about my ASVAB All Access program. So if you have test anxiety, if you blank out on word problems, if you're frustrated and can't keep a solid study schedule, then this program is there to support you. Long story short, you're going to be able to text me whenever you need help. You get all of the classes and the recordings so you can work around your schedule whenever you need to. On top of that, you're going to get access to over 2,000 practice problems 
that let you learn from every mistake by watching video solutions to those math questions. Not like a textbook where you have to figure it out on your own. On top of that, there are way more features like practice tests, study guides, flashcard sets, all that good stuff. So go ahead, either text me or check out the link either somewhere here in this video or in the description. That way you can keep raising your score and get the job you want because that's what you're here for at the end of the day. Again, I'm Coach Anderson. Check out the All Access program and sign up and then keep going watching this video so you can keep crushing it. I'll see you there. 104 divided by 26 is going to be four and because it's a negative divided by a positive, that's gonna stay negative. So boom, we have x equals negative four and when we look at our answer choices, we see that it's not gonna be a, it's not gonna be b, but c or d. C and D both have negative four as X, but we need to make sure what the Y value is. Is the Y value gonna be positive four or negative four? So from here, we keep going. All we have to do, my party people, is plug that X value in back into the equation, either one, and then solve for Y. The easiest way to do this is gonna be like this. Notice how earlier we solved for Y equals three X plus eight. We now know that X equals negative four, so go ahead, plug that in, solve, and you're good. So here we go. I'm gonna plug that right in. Again, we got x equals negative four. So I'm gonna plug that right into here. So we're gonna have y equals three times negative four plus eight. Now let's go ahead and solve here. Three times negative four, that's negative 12. Negative 12 plus eight equals positive, no, excuse me, negative four. Almost messed that up, right? So there we go. We have y equals negative four, so our final answer will be negative four, negative four, x, y, and there it is. We will have ourselves answer D as the correct answer. And so there is my math party, people. Just take a look right over there. If you wanna screenshot that and zoom in, please feel free to do so. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and continue solving more and more problems here. So I'm gonna do about two more, and then I'll let you move forward and solve these on your own. Remember, if you're in the course, you have this video, you have a lesson video as well, you have a worksheet coming up next, and then you have the speed drill set that's gonna allow you to practice over and over and over and over and over again. So here we go, number two. We have ourselves nine X plus Y equals negative 23, and we also have four X plus two Y equals negative 18. All right, so again, this is a problem that we could actually do with elimination very, very quickly. But the point of this video here is to show you how to get it done with substitution. So let's go ahead and get this done, my party people. What I can say is that, hey, look, in this equation right here, I can attempt to get the y by itself. If I can get the y by itself, then I'm more than able to substitute, get that done the right way, move on. So let's try that out. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and write that over here, right over there. And what I'll do is I'll move that 9x over to that left side. I'll move it over to that left side. And so let's, or to that right side, excuse me. I'm gonna move it over to the right side by subtracting 9x from both sides to start off. Because once I do that, my party people, that eliminates and we'll have y equals negative 9x minus 23. So now that we're here, we understand now that again, we have the y by itself right over here. And what y equals is negative 9x minus 23. So what I can do now is take this equation substitute the negative 9x minus 23 into it, and we're set. Here we go. Here we go. So I'll write the 4x plus 2 times y. But what's y again? Exactly. We'll replace it with the negative 9x minus 23. And that's going to equal negative 18, just like that. So now that we're here, let's go ahead and solve this equation, and we're good. Here we go. So we'll have that 4x sitting there by itself. Then we're gonna have ourselves over here, a nice little party, because the two gets distributed to that negative nine and that negative 23. So here we go. We're gonna go ahead and say we have two times negative nine x is minus 18 x. And then we have two times negative 23, and that's gonna be negative 46. From there, that's still gonna equal the negative 18 on that right side. And now that's it, we're gonna take this solve it for x, and if necessary, go back and solve for y. Here we go. Right here, we have our two common terms here. 4x minus 18x, that's gonna be negative 14x. And then we have the minus 46 equals negative 18. 
And from here, the next step I'll take is adding 46 to both sides. Nice and easy. And so it's going to eliminate right there on the left side, giving me the opportunity to go ahead and write negative 14x equals. And then you have to think about what 46 minus 18 is. Well, that's going to end up being 20, I believe it's going to be 28. So you take away 10, 36, take away the 8, cool, 28. So with that, we have negative 14x equals positive 28. Divide both sides by negative 14. And we are good because we'll have x equals negative 2. So there we are. We have x equals negative 2. We take a look at the answers. We said the only answer with negative 2 for the x is right there. That's the only answer with negative 2 for the x, and so we're done. No extra work needed to be done. We don't have to solve for y. We're set. So notice that it's necessary to solve for y when more than one answer has that value that you solved for, whether it's x or y. If there's two answers that have it, then you need to keep going. But if not, then you're good. So I'm going to go ahead and do one more for us, my party people. Let's go ahead and check this next one out over here. So let's go ahead and say we have this one over here, number three. So 6x plus y equals 18, or negative 18. And then we have negative 3x minus 4y equals negative 12. So just like in the previous problem, remember, if you're trying to use substitution, and typically substitution is wise when you have one of your variables already there with a coefficient of 1, not negative 5 or 2x or 9y or whatever. If it's just x or just y, get it by itself because it's going to make it very easy to substitute. So I see that here. Let's get that y by itself. Let's substitute and let's have a good time. So moving up here, we have 6x plus y equals negative 18. Look, let's be honest. If you want to go ahead and lower test anxiety, if you want to stop blanking out on word problems and actually understand how to use formulas instead of just memorizing them and not knowing what to do, then you need a program that's going to support you all the way. So a program that basically lets you text your coach whenever you need them, a program that allows you to go to classes and watch all the recordings, a program that gives you access to thousands of extra practice problems with video solutions, a program that gives you much, much more than that with practice tests, study guides, and more. That's exactly what you're going to need. Again, I'm Coach Anderson. Reach out to me, shoot me a text, or click the link in the video here to go ahead and learn about my ASVAB All Access program. It's everything my students use to raise their scores and get the jobs they want. So feel free to check it out so that way you can get in on the action too. I'll see you in there. What I'm going to do next is I'll subtract 6x from both sides. Right there. Booyah. And that's going to give me y equals negative 6x minus 18. Just like that. So now what I'm going to do here is substitute this into the other equation. The negative 6x minus 18, that is, that is equal to y. And so that means that this y right here is equal to negative 6 minus 18. So let's go ahead and get this job done here, my party people. I'm going to go up next over here. I'm going to rewrite this as negative 3x minus 4 times y. And y is going to be negative 6x minus 18. And that equals negative 12. So let's focus our attention right over here. Let's go ahead and distribute that negative 4 and move forward the right way. So here we go, my party people. Negative 4, that's going to get distributed to the negative 6x, and it's going to get distributed to the negative 18. Let's get the job done here. So we're going to have ourselves negative 3x. The negative 4 times negative 6x is going to be a positive, a positive 24x. And then from there, we have negative 4 times negative 18, which will give us a positive what? A positive 72. Because 18 times 2 is 36 times 2 again, and that's going to give you 72. So a positive 72 is what we'll have there. So again, notice how I'm incorporating mental math, like not, not flawlessly, but casually. You want to incorporate your mental math whenever you can, because the point of using mental math is to give yourself an easier time, not having to second guess yourself on certain calculations. So from over here, let's keep going. I have like terms that I can combine right here and right here. So negative 3x plus 24x, that'll come down to positive 21x plus 72 equals negative 12. From here, we'll go ahead and subtract 72 from both sides right over here and over there. So keeping going, this is going to go ahead and eliminate right here, giving us 21x equals 
that's going to be negative 84. And so the last step that we'll take is divide both sides by 21, eliminating the 21 on that x. And that's going to give us negative 84 divided by 21, and that's going to be negative 4. Booyah. So we have x equals negative 4 right over here. Now, is that going to allow us to just be done right now, or is there something else? Well, I have negative 4, and I see c is the only answer with negative 4 as the x, and so I'm done. I am done. But for the sake of this last problem that I'm doing with you, my party people, I'm going to go ahead and actually show you how to solve for that y one more time. So if you want to solve for y, again, you can grab either equation. You can grab this one or this one. You can even grab this one over here that we created earlier by just moving things over. Because you see, if we plug in the x, it's a very clean, it's a very, very, very clean uh, operation here. So why not? Let's go ahead and take that negative 4. And we'll go ahead and plug it right in. We'll plug it right in for x. And so what this means is we'll have y equals negative 6 multiplied by the x, which is negative 4, minus 18. And so therefore, negative 6 times negative 4, that's going to give us a positive 24. So y equals positive 24 minus 18. 24 minus 18, my party people, is 6. And so the answer would be negative 4 comma 6. Because again, remember, you write it in alphabetical order, x, then y. And so that's why, again, c is our correct answer. And so my party people, remember, this is a follow-up to systems of equations with substitution from that easy set going through those first two ideas. Now, we're at the medium section where you actually have to create that isolation, create that variable by itself, and then apply the same exact rules that you've been learning before. So hopefully this is a progression, a natural progression, because up next, I want you to try those worksheet problems out. And when you feel ready, try out those drill sets, because the drill sets are gonna really test your speed, making sure that you can go as fast as possible when it comes to test time. So again, I'm Anderson, your math coach, Always happy to have you. I'll see you in the next video, but let's get to the work. That way we can keep improving. I'll see you on the other side.